All right, I have been excited to make this video for a while and finally, finally I'm sitting down to do so. Let's talk about the circle of fifths. So you'll notice that I'm starting with a model of a keyboard here and overhead view and the grand staff below it. So what does that have to do with the circle of fifths? Well, the first thing I need to talk about when it comes to even understanding, beginning to understand the circle of fifths is transposition. So let's consider something very, very simple. Let's go down here to the grand staff. Uh, how about we choose the treble clef and transposition. It means to take an interval or a pattern of intervals and to shift them to a new starting point. So let's take something very reduced, very simple. For example, I take F here, this is F4. And F4 in relation to itself, as you know, is a perfect unison because it has zero semitones and it is the same letter in relation to itself in the same register, F4 in relation to F4. If I transpose it, let's say up a major second to G4, then this is an example of real transposition because you've noticed that I have uh, shifted this pattern and maintain both its quality and size, right? The pattern here is very, very reductive. It's just the perfect unison. Let's make it more of a pattern. Let's make it something more interesting. For example, let's say that I take these two notes, consider them a pattern, and we can observe that they have both an intervallic relationship as well as a direction. In other words, from F up to G is a major second up, right? We have three components here, right? There's the quality and size of the interval, that's two components, and then there's the direction going up. So if I were to transpose this, let's say to a different starting point, let's say we transpose this to start on G. And so I have two choices. I can either go G up a major second, which is going to be A, this is A4, or I can go, let's say from G up to some other kind of A, let's say A sharp, okay? Now you'll notice that in both examples, I still have preserved the step and the direction. Both of these are a step going up. What's different about them is that this, here, let me number them. This is example one, the prime where we're starting, and then this is the first transposition, and this is the uh, other kind of tram transposition I wanna talk about. So in number two, I have gone up by a major second from G up to A, that's this sound. And for number three, I'm going up more than a major second because if you listen to a G up to A sharp, some of you may say, oh, that sounds just like a minor third. It isn't a minor third because G and A are still related by step. So this is definitely a second, but because it has more than two semitones, in this case three, it's understood as an augmented second, okay, which is, by the way, just as a quick aside, characteristic of the harmonic minor scale between scale degree six and raised seven. So here we have two examples of transposition from our prime form, which was F up to G. So listen to them all in a row. Here's the prime F G, major second up. Here's number two, starting on G. Also a major second up. And here's number three, which is an augmented second. So what are these called? Number two and number three are transpositions of number one, but this one, number two, is called a real transposition, and number three is called tonal. What this means is that for the real transposition, I have preserved both the quality and the size of the prime interval of number one, and tonal means I'm only preserving the size, but not the quality. In other words, if I were to map number one onto number two, there would be a complete overlap. But if I were to map number one onto number three, the only element that would lap, overlap, sorry, the only element that overlap overlaps would be the size and not the quality, right? Major does not map onto augmented, but major does map onto major, not onto augmented, as I said. Okay, so if you understand this principle of transposition, then we can go more broadly and talk about scales. So let me clear this out, and we're going to start with scales. So we're going to be very specific about which kind of scales. I want to talk about diatonic scales. So let's get our treble clef back. Here it is. And diatonic scales are understood as 
the organization of the octave into all steps. And we have to be very specific here, only major and minor steps or major and minor seconds. So let's say that I start on middle C, here's C4. And remember the first rule that I just described of writing a diatonic scale is to move through the steps. And that is actually what diatonic means. Dia means through and tonic means tone. So the diatonic scale means moving through the tones. So the first rule of writing a diatonic scale is move by step through the octave. So if I start on C, my next letter will be D, then E, F, G, A, B, and I complete my cycle of the octave by landing here on C5. So this particular diatonic scale starting on C sounds like this. Now, I want to observe the pattern of steps from C4 up to C5. So the way to do this in a quick way, an efficient way, is to remember that there are only two natural key pairs a step apart. There are a minor second apart, or maybe visually, they don't have a black key in between them. So if we zoom out a little bit and just take a look at the keyboard above, you'll see that the two pairs are right there. That's B up to C and the other one is right there, E up to F. These are both semitones, or if we call this B, and we call this C, and we call this one E, and we call this one F, then these semitones are specifically minor seconds. Remember, a second refers to two letters that are adjacently or alphabetically related to one another, and if it's a minor second, it has just one semitone in between. Okay, so these are the minor seconds. So if I can find B and C and E and F on the scale below, then all of the other steps will be major seconds. And we can see that, by the way, very quickly if we just reference the keyboard above, because for example, let's go from G up to A, as we already did, by the way, in our earlier example. You can see that there are two semitones here from the white key G or the natural G up to this accidental, which we can call either G sharp or A flat, and then from this accidental up to the next natural key, or in this case, the white key. So that means we have a step, right, G up to A, and there are two semitones between them, or relating them, so that becomes a major second. Notice, if you're sort of still fresh on intervals, it's a little bit new for you, that the relationship between a minor and a major interval is one semitone. So increase a minor interval by a semitone, it becomes major. Decrease a major by one semitone, it becomes minor. Okay, so let's find E and F and B and C in our C scale below, and then we'll identify the minor second. So here is E and F right there. That is a minor second. And here is B and C. This is another minor second. All the other ones by default, as we already discussed, become major seconds. So major second, major second. I'll just consolidate this process, major second, major second, and major second. And that becomes the pattern of steps ascending through this C scale. Now, notice we can rattle off major, major, minor, major, 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 minor. Perfectly fine. But it's kind of a mouthful to do that. So rather than refer to this pattern of steps or what's called a mode, which is really just an interval pattern, we're going to use one word to kind of encapsulate this major, major, minor, major, 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 minor, right? And that word is Ionian. So here is our Ionian mode. Uh, this is a bigger conversation as to why it's called Ionian, but it does have to do with sort of the development of the ancient Greek modes that were co-opted by the church modes, kind of changed throughout history. But suffice it to say, for now, that these are ancient Greek place names uh, that have uh, been sort of inherited by modern Western music theory. So this one is called Ionian. It's a faster way of saying major, major, minor, major, or rather major, major, minor, major, 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 minor. That's the Ionian mode. So what I wanna do is stick to the Ionian mode only. And what I wanna do is split this up into two groups of four notes each. So I'm gonna take the first four notes, C, D, E, F, and draw a dividing line down the middle. And then I have my remaining notes, G, A, B, C. So this lower group of notes is called the first tetrachord, or the lower tetrachord, it doesn't really matter. Interestingly enough, the word tetrachord just means literally tetra, four, 
and the word chord means a group of notes. So tetrachord means a group of four notes. As simple as that. That word chord, very generic. It's a group of notes that can be expressed either melodically, for example, C, D, E, F, one after the other, or harmonically, that is all at the same time. Either way, I just played a tetrachord, a group of four notes. And then the upper group of four notes is either called the second tetrachord or, you probably already guessed it, the upper tetrachord. Right now, I'm going to observe something very interesting. Each one of these tetrachords has the same pattern of steps, or again, same mode. For the lower tetrachord, the first tetrachord, the mode is major, major, minor. For the upper tetrachord, the second tetrachord, it is also major, major, minor. What is the relationship if we take, let's say, two interval patterns that start on different notes, so one starts on C, the lower tetrachord, the other one starts on G, the upper tetrachord, and I relate them to one another? Well, the relationship here, as you can hopefully see, is one of real transposition. That means that major, major, minor maps onto major, major, minor. This is the lower tetrachord, the first, let's call it tetrachord, and this is the upper tetrachord, or the second tetrachord. So that's real transposition as it applies to the Ionian mode. Also notice, please, that between the two tetrachords, the connecting points, that is the last note of the first tetrachord is F, the first note of the second tetrachord is G, that interval is a major second. So just keep that in mind because we'll see it over and over again. All right, let's put some more work into this. I'd like to label each of the letters here as what are called scale degrees. So that means just what is the interval of any given note of the scale in relation to the first note of the scale. So the first note, C, is what's called scale degree one. It's drawn with a number and a little cap. Then we continue. This is scale degree two because it's a second above scale degree one. E is scale degree three, a third above scale degree one. F is scale degree four, a fourth above scale degree one, and so on. Scale degree five is G, scale degree six is A, scale degree seven is B, and scale degree one again is C5 all the way at the top. All right, so remember every diatonic scale has seven unique pitches, and then the first scale degree repeats at the top, one octave above. Each one of these scale degrees, of course, has a name. For example, scale degree one is called the tonic. Scale degree two is called the supertonic. Now, before I start writing them out, I want to indicate that really the way to understand these scale degrees and their names is, once again, as intervals in relation to the tonic. So let's try it out this way. Let me move this over a bit. So let's say that we start here with the tonic kind of expressed in the middle. Let's do it that way, okay? So here's scale degree one, the tonic. The first thing I wanna do is sort of go all the way up to scale degree five, just to demonstrate this. So here's scale degree five. Now, remember what we just had talked about is that scale degree five is a fifth above the tonic. So more specifically in this case, from C up to G, that is a perfect fifth C up to G. What would be a perfect fifth down from C? Well, the answer to that is F, which you'll notice is scale degree four. Okay, so even though the uh, little arches I drew are not drawn to scale, I hope you understand that I'm just trying to demonstrate that we have this symmetrical relationship around the tonic. A fifth above and a fifth below. The fifth above is called the dominant. That's always the name of scale degree five. And scale degree four, because it is a perfect fifth below the tonic, is called the sub-dominant, because what does sub mean after all? It means below, as simple as that, right? So if you can keep this in mind, then we'll find some other interesting symmetrical relationships. For example, let's go a third above the tonic. So that would be scale degree three. We can see what that is over here, it's E. And that is called the median. Now, if you're thinking the way that I'm hoping you're thinking, then if we go three below the tonic, 
then that would be just counting from scale degree one at the top. In other words, count from C5 down. So scale degree one to C5, let's go down three. One, two, three. So that's scale degree six. So scale degree six, since it's a third below the tonic, is going to be called the sub-median. Makes sense, right? Sub meaning below. Now, do you remember earlier I had sort of started rattling off those scale degrees and I mentioned the supertonic? Well, given that sub means below and super means above, what do you think the supertonic is? Well, what's left? We've got scale degrees 1, 3, 5, 4, and 6. Only two are left, scale degrees 2 and 7. So what's above the tonic by step is going to be the supertonic. So over here, let's have scale degree 2 called the super tonic. Remember, super just means above. And finally, we're going to go all the way down. Here, I'm going to move it over here just so we can see it. Scale degree 7, which actually, in this case, has two names. Now, in this particular mode of Ionian, scale degree 7 is going to be called the leading tone. Now, you might be thinking, well, shouldn't it be called the subtonic because that's consistent with the patterns that I've laid out? Yes, but not in this case. And here's the reason why. It all depends on the interval. So observe, please, the mode. You can see on the left side of the screen, between scale degrees 7 and 1 is a minor second. If the interval from 7 up to 1 is a minor second, then scale degree 7 is called the leading tone. You can even hear how it kind of leads or leans up to 1. So let me play this whole scale from C4 up. <laughs> That's scale degree 7. Do you hear it kind of wanting to continue up to C? Wanting to resolve up to the tonic? Right, so that sound is the leading tone sound. If scale degree 7 is a major second, or a whole step, let's say, or a whole tone, below the tonic, then that's called the subtonic. So if in this case we had, let's say, a flat scale degree 7, that's only in relation to the Ionian mode or any other mode where there is a leading tone and we flatten it. And by the way, if you, if you know anything about modes, there's only one other mode that has that leading tone built in naturally, and that's gonna be the one starting on F. Because if you go F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, remember we only had two natural pairs that are a minor second apart. Remember what those are going up here? Those are B and C, that's part of the Ionian mode, right? B up to C, scale degree seven up to one, and E and F. And the one, the mode that starts on F is called the Lydian mode. We'll talk about that either in this video or perhaps another time, but if it's flat seven in relation to these two modes, Ionian and or Lydian, then flat seven is called the subtonic. Okay, so those are the names of the scale degrees. Remember, all of them in relation to the tonic, so above and below. So let's review. Five above, dominant. Five below, subdominant. Quick caveat, when I was a student, I remember learning, or I learned it for myself, I wasn't taught this way, of course, but I made an erroneous mistake as a student, that the subdominant just means it's right below the dominant, as in scale degree four is a step below scale degree five. That is very logical, but it's not correct. In this case, it just means five below tonic. So dominant five above, subdominant five below. Mediant three above, submediant three below. Supertonic two above, that is a step above the tonic, and then leading tone or subtonic depending on the quality of that step from tonic down to scale degree seven. So remember, if it's a major second below, one down to let's say flat seven, that scale degree seven is called a subtonic. If it's a minor second below, then it's called the leading tone. Okay, so those are the names of the scale degrees. All right, let's go back to what we were looking at, which is, wow, a lot of stuff here. Um, this C Ionian scale, okay? So remember, I divided it up into two tetrachords, lower and upper, or first and second, and I observed that the mode of each tetrachord is related to the other mode, or the modes are related to one another via real transposition because both quality and size map directly onto one another. That's all hopefully just review. So what I wanna start doing now is offering a, a kind of shifting over a, a, a set of real transpositions. So let's do that in fact, okay? 
So I need to find another screen that I can work on. So let's do it here. And here's what we're going to do. Let's redraw that Ionian mode starting on C. So we're going to call it by the tonic and by the mode. So C Ionian. And I'm going to start on C. Here it is, middle C. And quickly knowing that the rules of diatonic scales mean you move by step through the octave. And I divide it into two tetrachords. There's my lower, there's my upper. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my upper tetrachord, which starts on scale degree 5, and I'm going to turn it into my next lower or first tetrachord. So my next scale, again, this is all treble clef, will start on G, where G is no longer scale degree 5, but scale degree 1, and I will continue up by step, because that's how to produce the diatonic scale, move by step through the octave. So I have G, A, B, C. I continue with D, E, F, and G. Now you'll notice that if I compare these two scales, the second one where the tonic is G, so it's called the G something, right? We have to figure out the mode in a second. The second one does not have the same pattern of steps as the first. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So here's what we know. The upper tetrachord of C Ionian is just like the lower. It's major, major, minor. I'm not going to write two because it's understood that these are all steps. So major, major, minor. Now, of course, that means that for the lower tetrachord starting on G, it's also major, major, minor. But what about the upper tetrachord as it stands now? So first, let me play this for you. So here's C Ionian. Here's G, and we're still questioning whether this is the same mode, Ionian, but playing all the naturals only. That's G4. Well, something we can observe really quickly is, did you hear that kind of bigger interval from scale degree seven to one, F to G? Well, that is a major second. So right there, that's a major, and that already means that this pair of scale degree seven to one does not map directly onto this pair of seven to one in G. So this is no longer real transposition. What we're looking at then is very broadly tonal transposition in terms of the upper tetrachord of C Ionian and the upper tetrachord of G, and we have yet to name that mode. Okay? And even more broadly, the entire scale of C as presented here and the entire scale of G as presented here as well, these are not related via real transposition because there are places where the majors don't map onto majors but onto minors and vice versa. So these two scales currently are tonally transposed or related via tonal transposition. Okay, So let's hear one more time that G scale with this other mode. And you know what, before we even hear it, let's just fill in those qualities. So let's see, starting with the upper tetrachord, scale degree 5 on D, D up to E is a major second, E up to F is a minor second, and then F up to G is a major second, and the relationship between C and D, that is scale degree 4 at the end of the first tetrachord and scale degree 5 at the beginning of the second tetrachord, that is another major second. So here's the sound of this mode, sorry, sounds like this. And the name of this mode is Mixolydian. So this is the G Mixolydian mode. Remember earlier I mentioned something about Lydian starting on F? Well, this is Mixolydian starting on G. Now, here's the thing. I, I don't know if you caught this earlier, but I really want a real transposition in relation to C and not a tonal transposition. So what I need to do then is to go into that upper tetrachord and adjust it so it's not major, minor, major, but rather it's supposed to be, if you recall, major, major, and then minor. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's see. Um, D up to E, scale degrees 5 up to scale degrees 6, or dominant up to submedian, that's major. E up to F is a minor, so I want it to be major. So I have to change that subtonic F. Remember, if it's a major second below, it's a subtonic. I need to raise it and it will become an F sharp. And now my subtonic, scale degree seven, becomes the leading tone, scale degree seven, and then from F sharp up to G is a minor second. So I'm gonna cross these out, right? These minor and major no longer apply. It's now major and minor. 
and then back to scale degree one. So do you notice I had to make just one change in the G mixolydian scale, get rid of that, to make it G ionian. And that change was I raised scale degree seven, subtonic became a leading tone, and now if I play this, you will hear that characteristic ionian sound. So here's the G ionian scale. Okay, if I play the C ionian scale, it'll sound like a real transposition. And now from G. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And that's what we're dealing with, all right? So, if we keep doing this, so the pattern is I take the upper tetrachord or the second tetrachord and make it into my next scale's lower tetrachord, I'm kind of starting to predict a bit of a pattern. So if I apply real transposition throughout, I should increase the number of sharps by one every time I do this. So let's put this uh, assumption, this guess, it's not really a guess, I know it's gonna happen, but if you're new to this, let's say that we don't know, we're just kind of guessing, and let's put it into practice. So let's take that G, now Ionian scale, and Take the upper tetrachord starting on D, and I'm going to play from, so that's D4. Remember, this is all treble clef, even though you can't see it on the screen. So here, I'll do this in case anyone's confused. So we're going to go D, E, F sharp, G, that's the lower tetrachord, and then A, B, C, and D, and that's the upper tetrachord. And I better make sure that the modes are the same for both tetrachords. So we know that the mode of the lower tetrachord here is major major minor and we know that we're going to connect scale degree four to scale degree five by a major second and in this case g up to a is in fact a major second so that's great and then we continue a up to b is major okay that's good b up to c is minor it needs to become major right so here keep this in mind b up to c is minor so we don't want a minor second we want a major second so what do we do we raise scale degree seven. So that C will have to become a C sharp. In other words, C natural is a subtonic raised to a leading tone, and then C sharp up to D is the minor second. And now you can see that the two tetrachords, major, major, minor, major, major, minor, map directly onto one another, and that's an example of real transposition as we need to make this an Ionian mode scale. Because it starts on D, this is called D Ionian with two sharps. So, so far we have a proof of concept, right? Uh, the concept is, or the idea is, if we take the upper tetrachord of one scale and make it the next scale's lower tetrachord, and we maintain the same mode, in this case the Ionian mode throughout, then we will produce one additional sharp for every one of these transpositions, right? So, from C to G to D, as we've done so far. Those are our, our current three tonics. Okay? So notice that the sharp that appeared in the G Ionian scale, that was F sharp, carries over. So there's a, an accumulation. It's cumulative. Here's the F sharp for D Ionian, and the new sharp is C sharp. So now we start to make even more kind of assumptions about this, which we'll see will be proven correct, which is if I transpose one more time and start on the fifth scale degree of Dionian as my new tonic, my new scale degree one, that will be A. The A Ionian scale should have three sharps, and it should have two sharps carrying over from Dionian, specifically F sharp and C sharp, and then my guess, based on precedent, is that the new sharp will be scale degree seven, starting from A, which will be G sharp. So my guess is that the A Ionian scale will have three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, we can do this maybe one more time and then start organizing all of this information into a graph. And that's ultimately what the circle of fifths becomes. Okay, so let's do this one more time. Uh, let's in fact move down oh, I don't know, to the beginning of the uh, next staff here. So treble clef, why not? And remember, we're gonna take the fifth scale degree of the D Ionian scale, which sounds like this from D4. Remember the fifth scale degree is A, so here's D, and a perfect fifth up is A. That's A, and we're gonna go A 
oops. We're going to go A, B, remember the C sharp carries over from before, D, draw a line so that we can uh, organize the two tetrachords, and then we have E, F sharp carries, in, carries over from before, G, and A, and I just have to test. I know that my lower tetrachord will have the same mode as my previous upper tetrachord, so that's going to be A to B major, B to C sharp major, C sharp to D minor, that's correct. Uh, D up to E, scale degree 4 up to 5 is major, that's correct. E up to F sharp again is major, F sharp up to G is minor. We need to make it major, so I raise scale degree 7, I raise that subtonic to a leading tone, I put the G sharp in, and now F sharp up to G sharp is major, and G sharp up to A is minor and that becomes my A Ionian scale and was I correct in my prediction from earlier that number one it has three sharps those three sharps in the correct order of appearance meaning as they appear in this entire process starting from the C scale forward F sharp was first C sharp was second G sharp was third right so the new sharp here is G sharp okay plus the F sharp and C sharp from before so What's the next prediction? Well, let's see. Scale degree 5 of the A Ionian scale is E. E is going to be my next tonic, in which case I will have four sharps, the three that I already have from A, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, plus scale degree 7, the subtonic becoming a leading tone, and if I'm starting on E as my next tonic, scale degree 7 is a step below, and that's just going to be D. So D sharp will be my fourth sharp. So the four sharps of the E Ionian scale will be F, C, G, and D. Let's see if that's correct. Okay, so I'm going to start with E. I'm just going to move it down an octave. Remember in the A Ionian that I just drew, E is all the way up on the fourth space. Uh, that's E5. Let's bring it down to E4. Here it is, E. And I'm going to go through the scale. In fact, let me do it a bit differently, uh, kind of more sucked succinctly there it is uh, so I'm going to draw E F G A B C D and E let me get that F sharp to sort of hang it out I'm going to move it slightly higher so it doesn't get in our way okay and uh, remember I'm going to split this into two tetrachords I've done that I'm going to remember the uh, three sharps that carry over so F sharp was first then C sharp was second then G sharp was third and let's just check the mode really quickly so starting from scale degree one E up to F sharp, major second. F sharp up to G sharp, major second. G sharp up to A, minor second. A up to B, major second, as we need it to be. B up to C sharp, major second. C sharp up to D, here's C sharp, here's D. Well, that's a minor second. It needs to be a major second. So I'm going to raise that subtonic scale degree seven. And now C-sharp up to D-sharp is a major second, and D-sharp up to E is a minor second, and I have the correct Ionian mode. Remember, major, major, minor, major, 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 minor. And as predicted, we have four sharps. In the correct order of appearance, we have F-sharp, then C-sharp, then G-sharp, and finally the new sharp right there is D-sharp. Okay, so four sharps, F, C, G, and D. Okay, now we can keep doing this if we want, but really we're beginning to see a pattern that's pretty clear. Okay, so let's start putting this into some sort of graph or just a table of some sort so we can sort of see it quickly, all right? So let's go here between the grand staff, or it's not a grand staff really, but between the staves on the bottom of the page. Here, if you want to make it a grand staff, there it is. But that's confusing, let's not do that. All right, um, and the keyboard. So here's what I know. For the Ionian mode, so here's the mode. For the Ionian mode, if my tonic is C, I have zero sharps. If my tonic is G, I have one sharp, and that sharp is F sharp. If my tonic is D, I have two sharps. Remember, they're cumulative, so F carries over plus scale degree 7, the leading tone, C sharp. Great! If my tonic is A, which I've already done, right, then I have three sharps, and those are the two that carry over from D, F sharp, C sharp, and the leading tone of A, which is 
G sharp. And if my tonic is E, remember I'm just going up by fifths here, right? C up to G is a fifth, G up to D is a fifth, D up to A is a fifth, A up to E is a fifth, because I'm always going by making my dominant the next tonic. And the relationship between tonic and dominant is, in this case, in this mode, Ionian mode, a perfect fifth. There's only one mode, if you know about these modes, where the interval from tonic to dominant up to dominant is not a perfect fifth, and that's the Locrian or the Locrian mode, where which starts naturally on B, B up to F is that diminished fifth. That's the sound. So E has four sharps, and they are F, C sharp, G sharp, and then finally D sharp. I guess my neighbors are pretty active over here, getting excited about the circle of fifths, perhaps. So here is my table so far. You'll notice that every time we add a sharp, it is a fifth above the previous sharp. Kind of makes sense because we're always transposing each of these scales up by a perfect fifth. So the accidentals, the sharps, should also add, or the new sharp should also be a perfect fifth above the previous new sharp. In other words, scale degree seven will be up a perfect fifth from the previous scale degree seven. Kind of makes sense, right? So if I just keep doing this, for example, what's a perfect fifth above E? Or what's the fifth scale degree of the E scale? Well, it will be B, right? So here's my B as a new tonic, and that will have five sharps, the four that I already had, F sharp, C sharp, and this is a lot of writing, isn't it? G sharp, D sharp, and then the new sharp will be scale degree seven, or a step below B, which is A, and it has to be a minor second below B, because it has to be a leading tone, as is natural to this mode, and that's going to be A sharp. Okay, well, let's keep going. Um, what is a perfect fifth above B? Well, that's gonna be F sharp, so that's my new tonic, and F sharp is going to have six sharps, and those are F, C, G, D, A, and what's a perfect fifth above A? E, and I put sharps next to all of them because I'm just trying to be kind of quick here. I don't like the way that looks. It can be better than that, right? That sharp next to D was a little wonky. Here's A sharp and here's E sharp. And that's six sharps, F, C, G, D, A, E. And if I do this one more time, a perfect fifth above F sharp or the dominant of F sharp Ionian will be C sharp. And this will have seven sharps. What are the seven? Well, the six that carry over from F sharp. So <gasps> F, C, G, D, A, E, and what's a perfect fifth above E? Well, we already know, you can see it right there, perfect fifth above E is B, so F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, B sharp. Oh boy, that's a lot of stuff, but that's it. Now, if you are somewhat new to this, you might ask me, um, can't we just keep going and produce eight sharps, nine sharps, 10 sharps? Well, the answer to that is, Technically, yes, but also technically, no. And technically, yes, as a quick digression, because double sharps exist, and a double sharp is technically two sharps. So it is possible to have seven letters within the diatonic octave and have one of them be a double sharp, which means we have seven sharps plus one more encapsulated, comprised in that uh, double sharp. So it is possible, but I'm not gonna talk about that here. It's just kind of an extension of this, these principles. So let's keep it simple. For now, this is what we know. Every diatonic scale has seven scale degrees. Since we're only worried about sharps, we can only have as many sharps as there are scale degrees. Therefore, no more than seven sharps. That's it, we've maxed out, okay? So let's put this onto a diagram. That diagram is gonna be the circle of fifths. So let's go to a blank page. I'll draw a circle. Hopefully the computer will snap it into a wonderful, oh, perfect, nice little circle. So here's what we're gonna do. This circle is gonna be red kind of like a clock. So at position 12, instead of 12, we're gonna have zero. This zero represents the number of accidentals in the scale. And since we're dealing with Ionian mode, I'm just gonna put that mode in the middle here so we know what we're dealing with. And then if I move clockwise, which is to the right, I'm going to add sharps to each scale represented on the circle of fifths. Very verbose, but what does that mean? So at position zero, do you remember which scale had no sharps and no flats? The one with all seven naturals? the C Ionian. 
So C is the tonic for this scale, and it has zero sharps. And also, as we'll discover in a, in a moment, zero flats. All right, it does have seven naturals. And now I start moving clockwise. One sharp, two sharps, three sharps, four sharps, five sharps, six sharps, and finally seven sharps. I'm gonna stop right there, all right? So which Ionian mode scale has one sharp? Oh, it was G. Which Ionian mode had two sharps? D, which one had three? A, what about the one with four? E, what about the one with five? B, what about with six? F sharp, and finally the one with seven, you remember, C sharp. So these are all of the scales and their respective tonics that have the corresponding number of sharps as indicated on the outside of the circle, okay? So the way to read this is, for example, which scale has four sharps? Well, the answer is E. E has four sharps. Now, do you remember which those sharps are? We could kind of put them here to the side. We can say, oh yeah, the order of sharps was, if you recall, F was first, then C, then G, D, A, E, and B, right? So if I read from left to right, I'm talking about the increasing number of sharps, and they're all cumulative, which by the way explains why there's an F sharp at position six. Another quick little digression. Let's say I were playing devil's advocate, and a student says uh, a fifth above B, here we are at position five, a fifth above B, because these are all fifths apart, of course, this is tonic to dominant, tonic to dominant, tonic to dominant, so on, just as we already were talking about, so no need to review that really. But here we are at B, and what's a fifth above B? Uh, F, now of course that's correct in terms of size, F is five above B, B, C, D, E, F, one, two, three, four, five, but it's not a perfect fifth, correct? Um, it is a diminished fifth because it has six semitones instead of seven. But even if you don't know that, how do you know that position six will be F sharp and not F natural? Because the order of sharps is cumulative. That is, if we have F as our first sharp, it will be present in every subsequent scale, right? So it's impossible not to have an F sharp. And that, by the way, leads us to another rule of writing diatonic scales. Do you remember the first one? proceed by step through the octave, okay? Either by a major second or a minor second in all of the modes, all of the natural modes. So in this case, the Ionian mode. The second rule, which is a derivative of the first and is a consequence of what I just talked about, is that there is no letter name repetition inside of the octave. So it is impossible in a diatonic scale to have both an F natural and an F sharp. You have to have steps because F in relation to itself, right, the same letter, is going to be a unison. Okay, so keep that in mind. So F natural in relation to F sharp is an augmented unison, but it doesn't matter. There's no such thing as augmented unisons making up the modes of these diatonic scales. So it has to be some sort of step, either a minor second or a major second. So that's why position six has to be F sharp and not F natural. Okay, so that's how you read this uh, circle of fifths. You'll notice though it seems incomplete. Like if anything, where are positions 8, 9, 10, and 11? Well, let's talk about that. So let's go back to our sort of notes over here. And what I want to do, let's see if I have another blank page, is I want to talk about what happens if we do the reverse of what we had been doing. So not to keep flipping back and forth across screens, but look over here for a second. So remember what we did to produce sharps. We took the upper tetrachord of one scale and made it the lower tetrachord of the next scale. What if we did the opposite? So let's start back here with C Ionian one more time. Okay, so here's C Ionian. C, D, E, F divided up into two tetrachords, G, A, B, and C. Okay, so what we're gonna do is instead of making the upper tetrachord the next lower tetrachord, we're gonna take the lower tetrachord of C Ionian and we're gonna make it the previous scale's upper tetrachord, right? Maybe it's a bit strange for me to say previous scales, but what I really just mean is instead of going up by fifths, we're gonna go down by fifths. So let's try that. So I'm taking C, D, E, F and I'm making it an upper tetrachord. So let's move it over here, C, D, E, and F. That is my upper tetrachord. And now to move down through the first tetrachord or the lower tetrachord, just proceed by step. 
uh, in reverse. So starting from scale degree one up here, it's F, E, D, C, and then continuing down is B, A, G, and F. There it is, right? So now let's just take a look at this. Uh, we know that the mode of the upper tetrachord starting from this F scale is our standard Ionian tetrachord. That is major, major, minor, okay? If we start moving down and just taking a look at the intervals, they're not going to they're not going to comprise the the uh, mode that we know for Ionian. For example, starting on this scale degree one down here, right? F up to G is major. Okay, so far so good. G up to A is major. Great. A up to B, if it's Ionian, should be minor. A up to B is major, and then scale degrees four and five. That's B up to C. Well, you know what that is. That is a minor second. This does not look Ionian. It's major, 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 minor, major, major, minor. Not at all Ionian. What does it sound like? If we start on F4, okay, there it is. So right there, we have a mode that is not Ionian, but do you remember I mentioned to you a mode that starts on F that does have a leading tone in it? So here you can see that E, scale degree seven, is in fact the leading tone because it's a minor second below F. If you recall, this particular mode is called the Lydian mode. There it is. Now, remember, we are not interested in other modes. So far we've talked about the Mixolydian mode that naturally starts on G. Here's what that sounds like, G Mixolydian. Hear that subtonic and tonic. And here's the F Lydian mode with the leading tone, by the way, E up to F. Okay, there it is. So this one is not Ionian. How do we transform it into Ionian? Well, starting from the bottom, let's go through it. F to G major, G to A major. A to B is major, we need to make it minor. So I want this to be a minor second, which means I lower scale degree four to B flat, and then everything shifts accordingly. B flat up to C is no longer minor, but it's major, and the rest falls into place. Look at the mode that we have now. No longer Lydian, it goes from F, major, major, minor with that B flat, and then major, 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 minor. So this has now become F Ionian, and it's exactly what we need. And here's what it sounds like with that one flat. And that's the F Ionian scale as we were looking for with one flat. So the first flat appears at scale degree four. Hmm, interesting. Let's do this a couple more times. So remember what we were doing. We take the lower tetrachord of one scale and make it the previous scales, that is the scale that's down a perfect fifth, C down to F is a perfect fifth. We make it the previous scales upper tetrachord. So let's take F, G, A, B flat. And we'll draw it in, I don't know, somewhere here. How about we do it all the way at the top, starting with F5, that's fifth line, F, G, A, B flat, there it is. And now let's move down through the letters, so B, A, G, F in reverse alphabetical order, E, D, C, and of course we have to start with the same tonic uh, in both places, B flat four and B flat five. Um, so there's our B flat scale, and we need to make it Ionian mode. So here's what we already know. The upper tetrachord is Ionian, major, major, minor, because it's just a repetition of the previous scales. Lower tetrachord, right? And to make this um, Ionian, I'm gonna make a prediction. We're going to have to add a flat or lower scale degree four, just as we had done in the previous scale starting on F. So let's see if that's the case. So let's start with scale degree one, B flat, and we're gonna go up by the mode that we need, major, Major, okay, B flat to C is major, C to D is major, good. And then D to E has to be minor, so E must be flattened, and that solves the problem because now E flat to F is major, and we have our Ionian mode, and look at that, two flats with the new flat, not the one that carries over from before, the new flat is E flat. There's our new flat on scale degree four. So if we keep doing this, let's just start making some predictions. Um, F introduces one flat, B flat. 
B5 becomes the next scale's tonic, and its fourth scale degree becomes the next new flat, which is E flat. So I'm going to make a prediction. So E flat will become my next scale, the tonic of the next scale. It will have three flats, B flat and E flat carried over from before, and then the fourth scale degree of E flat is E, F, G, A, is A, which is A flat, and that's three flats right there, B, E, A, with our tonic on E flat. I know that was a mouthful, but uh, shall we check if that's correct? Okay, so remember the process. We're gonna take the uh, lower tetrachord and make it the next scale's upper tetrachord. So the lower tetrachord here of B flat Ionian is B, C, D, E with the two flats. So let's move down here. Let's make a treble clef, why not? And uh, I'm gonna just start on B flat four. So B flat, C, D, E flat. That's my upper tetrachord. Draw the line to divide the tetrachords and move down by step from B flat, A, G, F, E. Has to be an E flat because the uh, it's the perfect octave that is organized into seven notes in the diatonic scale. So it has to be E flat to E flat and not E natural to E flat. And also, if it were E natural to E flat, that would violate the second rule of diatonic scales, which, as you know, is what? You can't repeat letters within the octave, within the cycle of letters within the octave. So I can't have both an E flat and e, an E natural. It has to be one or the other, not both. So let's go through the mode. Uh, starting with the upper tetrachord, B flat to C is major. C to D is major. D to E flat is minor. Okay, and the lower tetrachord, well, E flat to F, major. So far, so, so good. F to G, major. So far, so good. G to A is major. It has to be minor. So we're going to flatten the A and that becomes minor, and then A flat to B flat is major as we need it to be. And look at that, our next flat, our new flat, is present on scale degree four. So the E flat, in other words, the E flat Ionian scale has three flats. You know what, let's do this just one more time, and then we'll put it on the circle of fifths. And, and before that, we'll even make a graph. So I'm gonna make a prediction as I charge my pencil a little bit here, okay? So that prediction is, you ready? My next scale will start on my current scale, E flat Ionian, my current scale's subdominant scale degree, fourth scale degree. My next scale will be A flat. A flat will have four flats. It will have the three flats carried over from, from E flat in the correct order of appearance in this entire process, B flat, E flat, A flat. And the fourth scale degree starting on A flat, A, B, C, D, will be flattened, D flat, and those will be my four flats, B, E, A, and D flats. Whew, that was a mouthful, but I hope you're keeping track because that is correct, or it should be correct. Let's just do the process. So we take the E flat Ionian lower tetrachord and turn it into the next scale's upper tetrachord. So those are the notes E flat, F, G, A flat. Okay, so we'll start at the fourth space, why not? So that's E flat five, so E flat, F, G, and A flat. And let's start moving down. So D, C, B, and A. Remember, it does have to be an A flat. We're going to take the uh, three flats from E flat and carry them over. So those were B flat in the correct order of appearance always. So it's going to be B flat. E flat's already there. A flat. And then there's probably the prediction of scale degree four will be the next flat. But let's just check it out. I'm really just worried about the lower tetrachord in terms of its mode. So A flat to B flat. Major second? Yep. B flat to C, major second, yep. C to D, major second, but it needs to be a minor second. So how do I make C up to D a minor second? Flatten scale degree four, D flat. And then D flat to E flat is a major second, and I'm in business. So this A flat Ionian scale has how many flats? Four, what are they? B flat, E flat, A flat, and finally D flat. Okay, well, this is kind of enough information to tabulate all seven scales with flats. So let's do that in the area between the staves and the keyboard. So we're in Ionian mode again, and we're gonna take a look at our tonic. So our tonic, and then, you know, the flats, okay? So kind of a makeshift little table because ultimately the circle of fifths is what matters more. So if our tonic is C, it has zero flats, right? If our tonic is F, it's got one flat and that flat is B flat, remember? As we discussed. Our next tonic 
is B flat. See that carrying over, right? Our newest flat becomes the next tonic. This has two flats, B flat, they're all cumulative, so B flat must carry over from before plus E flat, okay? Well, guess what? Our next scale is gonna be E flat because it carries over from the previous new flat. This is gonna have three flats. What are they? B flat, E flat, and I hope you remember, A flat. Okay, let's continue uh, over on the next column <laughs> that I've arbitrarily chosen. All right, so the next scale is going to be A flat. A flat will have four flats. What are they? B flat, E flat, A flat, and of course, D flat. What's your prediction for the next scale? Well, remember how we just took the newest flat and we're gonna move it down to our next tonic. So D flat will have five flats. What are they? Well, the same ones we already have, B, E, A, D, right? B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, plus, well, let's see, fourth scale degree of D, or a fourth above D, or a fifth below D, right? It doesn't really matter. These are inversionally related, four above, five below. So it's gonna be G, D, E, F, G, one, two, three, four. So G flat, and this G flat becomes our next tonic with six flats, and so the, what are those six flats gonna be? B, E, A, D, G, so many flats to write. And our next one will be, well, a fourth above G or a fifth below G. Fifth below G, you know, that's gonna be C. So C flat, right? And we have one left, because right now we have six flats, we need to have seven flats, so let's just move it over. And so C flat becomes our last tonic with seven flats, right? Remember, these are all flats, four flats, five flats, six flats, one flat, two flats, three flats, just so you're clear what I'm talking about, seven flats. And those seven flats are the six from before, B, E, A, D, G, C, so B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, and what is a fifth below C? Perfect fifth below C or a perfect fourth above C? F. And those are all the flats for the scales that have flats, okay? So let's take all this information and move it to our circle of fifths. You remember where that was? So let's find it. Here's our circle of fifths, okay? So now we're gonna move counterclockwise, that is to the left. And here we're adding flats. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Okay, do you remember what they were? So for one flat, the tonic was F. Ah, that's where the F is, not at position six, which we already proved has to be F sharp. Position two, that is the scale with two flats, is B flat. Position three, as you remember, is E flat, I'm hoping. Position four is A flat. Position five, I'm gonna move this down uh, outside of the circle, is going to be D flat and then position six is G flat, and position seven is C flat. Okay. If you look carefully, we have all of our tonics and the respective scales written out over the circle of fifths. Um, incidentally, do you remember the order of flats? So let's see, the first flat was B flat, that's scale degree four of the F Ionian scale. The second was E flat, then A flat, then D flat. Hold on, hold on a second. I'm look over here for a second. Huh. The first flat is B. Second one is E. Third one is A. Then D, G, C, and F. In other words, these accidentals, red right to left, give us all the flats. Red left to right, they give us all the sharps. So I can read this entire circle of fifths and tell you exactly the letters of any scale I point to. For example, um, find position five flats. The tonic there is D flat. The D flat Ionian scale has the following five flats. I'm reading the flats in the order that they appear starting from B. I just need five of them. B, E, A, D, G. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat which means those five flats are present and there are two naturals. Which two naturals? 
the remaining letters in this sequence. So B, E, A, D, and G are all flat, and C and F are naturals. And it makes sense that C is a natural, by the way, because C is the leading tone in D flat Ionian. And the leading tone is a minor second below the tonic, and C is a minor second below D flat. How about that? Um, what else? Uh, let's see, uh, picking another random spot. What about, oh, I see that arrow. It's pointing to B. All right, B has five sharps. What are those five sharps? Well, I'll start from F. That's always the first sharp. F, C, G, D, A. Those are the five sharps, and there are two naturals left in that scale, E and B. Well, B, of course, because we're starting on B, and remember, since it's a diatonic scale, if we have one B, in this case a B natural, we cannot have a B flat or a B sharp, so that makes sense. And then E is scale degree four in the key of B, right? Just count up B, C, D, E, one, two, three, four, and that has to be a perfect fourth above the tonic, and B up to E is a perfect fourth. Okay, that's really, really useful. It's a powerful tool. But you know, if I were playing further devil's advocate, I would be confused by something. Um, let's do a quick kind of assessment of the number of scales here. So there are how many scales with sharps? Seven, right? Those are all of these scales, right? One through seven. And how many scales are there with flats, right? So there are seven of these. I'm just going to write that out. Well, there's over here, one through seven, right? Those are the ones with flats. So there's seven of those. And then there's one left at the top. That's the scale with all seven naturals or no sharps, no flats. So that's just one up here. Add those circled numbers, seven plus seven plus one, and you've got a total of 15, listen to the vocabulary, real transpositions of the C Ionian, the natural mode, right? The one with all naturals. So there are 15 Ionian transpositions or scales, okay? Uh, I'm a little confused and hopefully you are following why I'm confused. Um, if you know anything about the keyboard, do you know anything about the keyboard? Look at this, here's the keyboard. If we start, let's say, from C, it doesn't matter. How about we do this one here? Is that C4, right? And we go up to the next C, that's C5. How many keys, individual keys, are there within the octave, right? Because remember, this is a perfect octave. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You don't count the C at the top, right? Because it's a, just a repetition of where you started. Of course, I could have done that so much faster. There are seven naturals, white keys, and there are five black keys. So that's seven plus five is 12. So there are 12 individual physical keys. Here they are in, if we organize the octave into semitones and just go up by semitone. That's called the chromatic scale, right? The most quote unquote colorful scale. And uh, how do we get 15 scales when there are 12 physical keys representing 12 potential tonics? Well, the answer to that is hopefully staring you in the face. So look at this wedge at the bottom of the circle of fifths, okay? So do you notice that positions seven and five, six and six, and five and seven have tonics that are the same physical location on the keyboard, assuming we're in the same register, of course. So C sharp, look at position seven sharps, C sharp. Look at position five flats, D flat. Here's C sharp, here's D flat. Now, of course, this is an, in an equal tempered tuning. I understand that. If you're not playing the piano, then this is not quite the same. C sharp and D flat are not quite the same when you can tune your instrument as you play. But for the piano, this is called an enharmonic relationship. Same physical key, different names for it, up to three, right? Um, but in this system, the third label, so in other words, C sharp or D flat or B double sharp, in this system, there are no B double sharps. There are no, sorry, I should be more general. There, there are no B double sharps, but there really are no double sharps more generically and no double flats either. So we're just worried about flats and sharps. This is an enharmonic relationship. Look at F sharp at position six and G flat at position six. Also the same physical key for both labels and harmonic relationship. And then look at position five for the sharps and position seven for the flats. That's B or C flat. 
same thing, enharmonic relationship. Okay, so this wedge at the bottom of the circle are all of the enharmonically related pairs. Okay, now if you're learning how to play these scales, yes, absolutely, in your mind you should distinguish between, for example, C sharp and D flat, and F sharp and G flat, and B and C flat, but for practical purposes, when you're playing them, they are all the same. So if I play for you, for example, B Ionian, and then C flat Ionian, same sound, right? There's no difference on an equal tempered system. Composers, of course, may utilize the keys in different ways, but for our purposes right now, they sound the same. So we haven't actually violated uh, the number of notes in the octave. We still have 12 individual keys, but we happen to have 15 individual scales because of the three enharmonic pairs. And that's it. So I think that's a pretty good place to stop for now with this video as far as explaining the circle of fifths for the Ionian mode. I guess the only caveat is you might say, but um, why aren't you just saying major? If you know anything about these scales, you might say, well, why do you keep calling it C Ionian, G Ionian, etc.? Why not C major, G major? Well, major, if you'll pardon the siren in the background, just refers to the interval from the tonic up to the mediant. So if you go back here, look at that C Ionian scale. Tonic is scale degree one, mediant is scale degree three. C up to E is a major third, or two major seconds, right? That's why it's called a major scale, and only for that reason. So, in fact, in today's little lesson, we've actually come across two additional modes that were also major. Do you remember which ones they were? Look over here. Remember we had crossed out G mixolydian? That's if I play only the white keys, only the naturals, right? So this is the natural mode for G, which is called mixolydian. Sounds like this. This is not with the F sharp, all white keys, all naturals. But do you notice that G up to B, right? That's scale degree one, up to the mediant, scale degree three, well, that's a major third. Therefore, this is a major mode. But it's not Ionian, it's called Mixolydian. And then, if you recall, there was one more mode that we did, which is called Lydian, right? There it is, starting on F without the B flat, sounds like this, has those characteristic three whole steps at the beginning. Kind of sounds, if you just look at the first four notes, like a whole tone scale, right? A whole tone scale divides the octave into six equal parts, all related intervallically by the whole step. Mostly major seconds and then one diminished third. But again, for another lesson, here's what the F Lydian scale sounds like. And again, the tonic is F, and the median is A, and that's a major third. So these three scales are the three major modes out of a total of seven, right? They all start on each individual letter of the, each individual natural, C, D, E, F, G, A, or B, and proceed through the remaining naturals by step. So the one that starts on C is Ionian, the one on F is Lydian, and the one on G is Mixolydian. Those are the three major modes. The minor modes, starting on D or E and A or B, are all minor. Why? Because, for example, D up to F, scale degree one, scale degree three, minor third. That's the Dorian mode. If you start on E, the third is G, that's the Phrygian mode. If you start on A and go to its third, that's C, that's the Aeolian mode. And finally, we already, I talked about this briefly, the Locrian, the one with the diminished fifth from scale degree one to five, B up to F. The third, the median is D, and B up to D is a minor third. And those are the four minor modes. Again, Dorian, Phrygian, I'm just playing the tonics, Aeolian, and Locrian. And the three majors, Ionian on C, Lydian on F, and Mixolydian on G. Okay, so for another lesson, we can talk about the other modes and how their circles of fifths 
up here. But for now, going back here, we've got our circle of fifths for the Ionian mode, and we didn't have to memorize it, we just had to understand how it works, okay? I guess there's one more thing I can point out, which is kind of cool. Um, there's something I like to refer to, let me change colors here, as the triangle, Let's see if I can do this cleanly, triangle within the circle, okay? The triangle relates all of the keys, all three of them, that have seven. Seven what? Well, at position zero, this, as you know, is seven naturals. At position seven all the way clockwise, that's going to be seven sharps. And position counterclockwise, that's going to be seven flats. Do you notice that all three of those keys, C at zero, C sharp at seven sharps and C flats at seven C flat at seven flats. They're all C's. They're all the same letter. You know why that is? It's a pretty simple concept. Remember that all of the keys, all of the tonics here, are related to one another via real transposition. So let's say that you have seven naturals. Okay, seven naturals. That's at position zero. And you uh, transpose each of the naturals up an augmented unison. So one natural becomes a sharp, the next natural becomes a sharp, like C becomes C sharp, that's an augmented unison up. D becomes D sharp, E becomes E sharp, and so on. So transposed up an augmented unison, seven naturals become seven sharps. C becomes C sharp. These are the two tonics, okay? What if you do the opposite? You take seven naturals and you transpose them down by an augmented unison. Well, then you will produce seven flats. So C natural at position zero will become C flat at position seven flats. This triangle within the circle works for every single circle of fifths. So even if it were Dorian mode or Lydian mode or Phrygian mode, doesn't matter. If we take, let's say, Lydian mode, that means F is at position zero. Remember the scale that has all seven naturals. <laughs> If we transpose every one of those naturals up an augmented unison, we'll get seven sharps. F sharp is the scale in Lydian mode with all seven sharps. And F flat, if we transpose F down a semitone, well, not semitone is, I'm thinking generically. If we transpose it down an augmented unison, F flat will have all seven flats. So to be continued, we'll talk more about that. But for now, I think this suffices. The circle of fifths, an introduction.